Hello, my name is Rafael Batiste. I am professor uh, in at the University Federal of Goiás. I work in the area of agrometeorology and crop modeling. And today I want to talk about introduction to climate change. That's a, a, a class that you are uh, present to you through the collaborative online international learning uh, with the partner from Sinclair College, Professor Dennett. Okay. And during my presentation, I want to talk a little about the climate versus weather, the difference between climate and weather, what is the variability, tendency, and the anomaly. Uh, I want to talk about climate change, the definition, what is the greenhouse effect, uh, observe data that are uh, giving support to us to, to define what is climate change, impacts and alternatives for present and future to reduce the problems with climate change, uh, where you can find the variable information and some conclusion. All right. So to start, I like to bring this image here. It's a map from Brazil showing to us how much rainfall we have uh, in a year uh, from average from 30 years. So, what is climate? Climate, it's a historical condition for a specific variable. Here we have example for rainfall, where this average here was get from 30 years of observed data. So, when you talk about climate, we are talking about a long period that you need to measure the weather and get this information. So, here we have these different partners of rainfall in Brazil. But what is weather? What is weather? Weather is the current condition. What is happening now in, at this moment? Here we have the same map showing to us in these blue areas where we have rainfall in this exactly minute that I get the data from our national service. So, see that climate is a historical condition and weather it's what happened now in that moment that I look for that variable. So, we need to be careful about this because when you talk about climate, you are talking about a long period, but when you talk about weather, we can talk about a short period. And based on this information, we can see here what's the type of climate in Brazil and USA. What, what type of climate we have in Brazil? We can see that we have different types across the Brazil. We can see in USA we also have the same, uh, the, the same pattern with different uh, weather types, uh, climate types, sorry, uh, uh, based on these scoping climate types. So this researcher, uh, he developed a approach based on air temperature and rainfall across the year, uh, based on historical condition. Uh, he classified this different weather condition across this different region to understand how is the pattern of the climate in these different areas. Okay? If you get our city, here we have Goiânia. We live here. Our university is located here in the city. And we compare with Dayton in Ohio, uh, Ohio, we can see that we have different conditions. Here in Goiânia, we have a climate type AW, uh, that is a tropical zone with dry winter. So it's warmer in the summer with rainfall, but in the winter we have no rainfall. It's a, a dry condition during this period of year. And if you get Dayton, we have a CFA, it's a humid, humid subtropical with hot summer. So, based on the air temperature and based on, on rainfall during the year, we have these two classification. If you get here, we have this similar weather than a smaller area here in the south of Florida. Okay? And if you compare your type of uh, climate, all this green area here in the south of Brazil has the same classification. So, based on the historical condition, these areas have the same type of climate 
uh, across these 30 years when I analyze the temperature and the rainfall, rainfall distribution during the year. Okay, so this is a stacked condition because it's the average of 30 years. This is the main mesh that you need, message that you need to look from this difference between climate, a historical and stable condition, and weather, a, 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 a condition that is happening now uh, with more variability between the periods. So, based on this information, we need to understand that the weather can change year by year, can change by day, can change by hour. If you get in the morning, you have a colder uh, air temperature, but during the day, uh, the sun sent energy for us and temperature increase. So we have a change in the weather between the morning and the afternoon. But the climate, no, the climate is more stable. Uh, there is no variability between a long period. We analyze this long period and verify if there is uh, what is the, the natural condition that we reach. For that, I want to bring another uh, conception that it's the natural climate variability. Here we have an image from our weather station here in University, and here we have data from 1978 until 2017. Uh, the rainfall, the amount of rain by year that you have in these different uh, years. So we have 40 years of data. And you can see that this red line here is the average. This is the mean value between these 40 years. And between the years, we have a natural variability because of the climate system uh, that change for different periods. We can see that we have periods with more rainfall, periods less. But this, between these two dashed lines, are the natural variability that occur specifically in this region. So this variability, it's natural. We can see that from one year to another, there is a big change. And sometimes people say that, oh, this difference between this year for these years, this year is climate change. It's a wrong definition because this change from this specific year for this one it's a natural condition in the region because it's inside of the natural climate variability that occur in this region. So always bring that climate can vary between a no range around the mean value. So this is the natural. And when, when you talk about climate change, you need to be uh, attent to look for the natural variability to say it's not our, it's occurring some change in the climate. Okay, so this is the natural variability for rainfall in our weather station. Another point is the climate has a natural climate tendency that it's a period with increase or reduction in the variable for more than five years. You can see here that we have a period that we came from the average to a maximum value observed here. We have another period here that we came from a high value and continue reduce for six years. We have this tendency. This is a natural tendency also for this region because the climate system. Okay, and we also have the anom anom anomaly that's a natural deviation it's classified as a bigger deviation from a mean value so this dashed line brings to us a uh, aspect variability but when you have this point out of this dashed line probably uh, we have some strange uh, strong uh, action in the climate system that are affecting the climate the, the weather here for this specific year in this two condition bring to us uh, a natural climate anomaly too different from the average and from the other years. You can see that in these 40 years we have just one value above and one, this one it's in the, the limit but we have more one here 
far below value. So you can see that in 40 years, we have just two anomalies because this we call anomaly. What's gonna happen with climate change? This anomaly, this big anomaly from the average, we wanna increase the frequency of occurrence. So this is too bad for us because with more years with too much rainfall or years with more dry years in this sequence, okay? So, but looking this, looking the difference between climate and weather, I said that climate has have a natural variability. So, what is climate change? Maybe we can say that it's a natural variability of the climate. When you talk about climate change, we consider a bigger conception, looking for a lot of years, looking for the Earth, not for a specific region. We look for a big thing, looking for the Earth, lo looking for a long period of data. So climate change consider changes in the atmosphere associated with change in the components of the climate system. So what's the climate system? It's this bring, uh, bring for us these five elements here. We have the atmosphere, we have the hydrosphere, the cryosphere, the lithosphere, and the biosphere. So when you talk about climate change, we look for these five components, look what's happening in the atmosphere, what is the impact of the change here in this anomaly of temperature, for example, and the impact on the other uh, components of the climate system. Okay? So you don't look for a specific year or a specific location. You look for a long time and a long land, uh, a big land, in this case, for the Earth. And here in this graph, we can see the anomaly, relative anomaly of the temperature relative to this period, 90 uh, to 2000. Okay, so this value represents across this period if the Earth have temperature above or below the average when you consider the average for this period. The mean temperature for Earth is around 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, so every time that you have a value below or above, it's from this mean value that we measure in the Earth. Here you can see that in 188 we have a, a long period here with like 40, 50 years with the mean, uh, with the anomaly below the average. Here we have a period around the average, but here in the last 40 years we saw a big increase in the anomaly of temperature, okay, for the average value in the Earth. And this measurement bring attention for climate change and the scientists are trying to understand what's gonna happen or what's happening now that lead to this air temperature increase for the Earth, okay? So, the first step was to understand uh, what is the process for the Earth uh, heating, okay? This natural process we call here the greenhouse effect. Uh, we have the, the sun send energy to us. This energy can cross the atmosphere, reach, reach the, the surface. Here in the surface, part of this is reflect to space. Part is used here for heat the soil, for photosynthesis and all process that occur here. And this energy can be transformed from a high intense to a low intense energy. And when this low energy intensity is sent back to space, the atmosphere composition can send back a part of this energy to surface. Okay, so when this energy come back to surface, this keep the Earth warming uh, because we are retaining energy and not losting for space. 
This natural process uh, make possible the life life in the earth, where we have a, here a average temperature when you consider our earth around 50 degrees Celsius or uh, 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the average temperature here in the earth because this natural process. So just to, to bring to you what happens and why we are changed the atmosphere and how is this impact. When the sun sends energy to the, the earth, the, the energy comes in the way of a short wavelength. This is the, the maximum point of energy and the low point of the energy from this wave. And when you say that this wave is short, means that the distance between two maximum emission is too short. So I have more energy arriving by time that make this wave from sun more strong, that have more energy. In the other side, when the Earth get warming, the Earth start to emit uh, emission, uh, start to emission energy also, but because the Earth is not too hot than the Sun, this uh, wave has a long wavelength. The distance between the maximum point of emission is longer, make this energy more uh, not too strong like the one that came from the Sun. So. We have two types of energy that are, are emitted by some by the Earth. Okay. So remember this point now that we're gonna talk about the atmosphere composition. The energy of the short wave came from the sun, sun, and long wave came from the earth. Here we have the definition. What is the greenhouse effect and why you are increasing the uh, greenhouse effect? Here, in this side here, we have the energy that came from the sun. And the only gas in the atmosphere that is able to intercept this X represent how much energy this gas can intercept from this short wavelength, we can see that the only the O3 uh, can intercept the energy from the sun. You can see that C84 and N2O CO2 they are not able to intercept this energy here. So all the energy that can be in the sun arrive here in the surface. Okay, and here we have just the O3 intercepting this strong wave that uh, arrived here in the Earth. But when you look the energy lost by the Earth in the long wavelength, you can see that CA4, N2O, and CO2 they are able to intercept this energy. So this means that when this wave came from the sun, he crossed the atmosphere and they reached the, the surface. But when the Earth is losing this energy, the CO2 can intercept this energy and send back to the Earth. So this is the process responsible for the Earth retain energy and what we are doing now is to increase the CO2 concentration. We are increasing the retain of energy that Earth is going to lose lost by the, to, the, to the space. Okay. And this is a natural process and very important because if you don't have this greenhouse effect, the mean Earth temperature is going to be less 18 degrees Celsius or near zero for a night. So the life under these extreme temperatures, it's very difficult. So 
the process of greenhouse effect is natural. But what are what are we doing now, and why we are increasing the Earth temperature? So this is a, a natural process. CO2 part of the energy cross go to space and the part is retained, keeping the Earth in the 15 degrees Celsius. And this is a process that was in equilibrium for a long time. So we arrive energy, we lost energy, and you keep the temperature almost constant along the time. What, gonna, what we are doing now, we are improving the anthropic green arouse effect. We are increasing the CO2 concentration and for now we have increased 0.8 degrees Celsius in temperature by the increase of the retain of the energy from CO2 emission. Okay? And in 2015 we have this agreement between countries that try to reduce CO2 emission to keep the temperature uh, increasing the, in the Earth below 2 degrees Celsius until uh, 2100. Okay? This is a, 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 a agreement that was did in 2015 to all countries try to reduce this emission uh, to try to avoid increased temperature. Okay? And here we have the CO2 concentration and when you look we are going to look from 1979 until the present and after you come back a long period ago and here we have the points where the CO2 concentration is measured and here we have the concentration of the CO2 and the position in the Earth in the equator line uh, in the North Hemisphere and the South Hemisphere I'm going to play here you can see that along the time the CO2 concentration is changed. In the North Hemisphere, you can see that in the, in the summer the concentration reduces, in the winter concentration increases. This variability it's because the North Hemisphere have more land, so in the summer the, the forest can put more CO2, use more CO2, reduce the concentration. But in the winter, we have emission that make increase the CO2. So you can see that in January 1979, the concentration was 336 ppm in the atmosphere. We have two points here. This red one in the Manua Lua in the Hawaii. That is a, a, a reference with a long time recording CO2. And here in the blue, we have the uh, south hemisphere here in the Antarctica. Okay? And you can see along the time the concentration is increasing, increasing. You can see that a long time we have been increasing the, the points of observation. Uh, we can see that some points we have a, a, a big fluctuation to high or to low because these is are located near uh, a big city that can emit more in some time of year. So here's the first point. You can see that all CO2 has a similar tendency across the globe. Okay? And this, it's a very important point when you talk about strategy for climate change. You can see that now we are reaching here. 400 ppm in January uh, 2016 we reach here uh, 400 ppm and now based on the the soil analysis and the ice analysis the scientists scientists can back can go back here in the past to analyze what happened in this period to see the, if this variability here in the CO2 concentration it's a natural or anthropic condition. And here is the year. Now they gonna back a long time ago. I don't know how to say this year, but it's a long time. You can see that here 
is the time that we are now in the ice age we have less than 200 ppm in the atmosphere You can see that we have a natural variability, but the main point is that this natural variability occurs in a long period. If you stop here, you can see that this variability occurs from 200 to 250, occur in a long period, not a short time. If you compare here our range, you can see that the last 50 years increase almost from 300 to more than 500 ppm so never we record too high values in the atmosphere and this increase in a short time okay this is the main point so we have data showing to us that CO2 concentration is increased we know that there is a physical process behind the greenhouse effect associated with CO2 and now we're gonna see some impacts in the temperature and the other variables okay but before this I want to bring for us a, here a, a main point that there is no border for CO2 here we have the emission during one year uh, this is the scale for CO2 concentration uh, and show to us across one year, 2060, uh, what happened in the in the global. So one, when you have more uh, red here, means more CO2, and because the atmosphere movement, the CO2 that we are emitting here in Brazil or in USA, they are dissolved in the global. Okay, so we have these things happen, and you are emission but this impact all the earth not a specific condition so you can see that now in the summer for the north atmosphere we have more emission and you can see that what it's being emission here it's dissolved in the atmosphere and get for the other region in the earth Okay. You can see that when you're going to the winter, the emission increase in the north atmosphere. If you look here in the South America, now we're going to start the in the summer. You can see now we're going to start to reduce emission, and here in the south now in the in the winter, you can see that we're going to increase the emission because the forest burning because it's a dry period of year in most of Brazil. You can see now in the summer we have a, a considerable reduction of emission because the the forests are using the CO2 for photosynthesis. So all CO2 that are being emission because the wind and the, the atmosphere movement, this is dissolved uh, in this different region. And because this, we need to, to make a, a effort to bring all countries to, to help to reduce CO2 because if just one country work for reduction, it's not possible to reduce the CO2 emission and the impact of the greenhouse effects. Okay?
start to go to the winter in the northern hemisphere you can see that there is an increase because we reduce the observation by the, the, the plants here in this, the South America we also have an increase so if you have a physical process behind this we have data showing that structural concentration increase so we have the impact here in the mean, uh, in the temperature anomaly by country. So here, when you have, we start this in this year, 18.8. When you have the blue one, we have the anomaly, anomaly by country below the average, 2, 1, uh, 0. And when you have this red one, we have 1 plus 2 degrees Celsius in the average. I highlight here Brazil and USA and now we're going to start to see what happened you can look for the year and look these two countries you can see that now we have most with near zero with blue but when you start uh, 98 you can see that we're going to see a lot of red condition means that the temperature by counter it's above the historical average. And see here we have now in 2017 uh, 1.3 degrees Celsius for Brazil and 1.5 for for US. And all countries have temperature above the average. So you see that. We have a, physic, a physical process, I have CO2, I have data on temperature. We can all see that in the historical analysis, the 10 warmest years all occurs in the recent years before 2000. We have a lead the 2020, 20, uh, 16. 19, 15, 17, 18, 14, 10, 13. So, nine years for the last decade, just one from 2005. The warmest years uh, across this more than 100 years of data analyzed. And this increase of temperature bring impacts in the climate system. Uh, here, example for the Arctic. The end of the summer Arctic sea ice extend it's the eighth lowest on record. This is the border from the average, and they analyze that every year. Uh, the end of the summer, this area with the ice it's smaller. Okay, here we have the data for this process from 98 until the present. Here you can see that along this period we have a reduction of the uh, ice in the, in the end of the summer because we have this association between CO2, retain energy, increase temperature and affect the ice land. Okay? But if you look here, we have the Arctic here and if you look the Antarctica, this area here in the south hemisphere it's seven times larger than the Greenland. Okay, so if you have impact here, we have impact here in this region. And I like to see to, to show this image that show that Antarctica it's a like a big mouth of ice, and when it increases the temperature, this ice go to the ocean. And here we have a simulation that shows to us what gonna happen if all the ice is melting. Uh, in these different areas, so all the ice we have it's uh, melt. What's gonna happen? It's different seeds. So you can see here you have the earth, and they make a simulation. Here you can see what gonna change if the sea level it's increasing. For different region, and most of the population live near the ocean.
So here we have two, two main strategies. We can try to, to reduce the climate change impact or we can uh, bring other strategies to adapt to this. So how you can avoid all these impacts that are too big, if you're going to spend too much money to save our lives, then start to reduce the climate change now. You can see we lost almost all the, the Florida on a lost. All this east board house has a, a big impact. So this is just a extreme uh, result if all the ice in the earth will not be melt. Okay. Uh, another point important is that for climate change, uh, the intensity and the frequency are going to be higher. So uh, here I bring an example of the Irma hurricane. Uh, I, I like to show my student because we don't have this Brazil. So this frequency of occurrence, this hurricane, are going to be more, uh, we're going to increase with this big hurricane occurring with more frequency, like here you have two in this moment here, this is going to increase the frequency and you need to be prepared for this intensity occurring with more frequency. Another point I also bring here, uh, it's the extreme uh, cold that you have in US, here is the, the news in Portuguese, but they are talking that uh, cold weather can be climate change. So if we are talking about the earth getting warm, because why you have this uh, extreme uh, cold condition? So cold also can be climate change. So this is the process. We have this polar vortex that occur here above Canada, and all the the cold air it's maintained here because this is. It's a, a vortex that uh, keep the cold air uh, here in above this polar region. With the the climate change, we are gonna we start to change this uh, condition. So the vortex uh, strong jet stream it's here, but because the change of the earth temperature, they can change this movement. And what happened in the U.S. was that this vortex came over here, the U.S., and bring this cold condition above this region. It's a natural process, but the problem that this is occurring with more frequency and is occurring for a long period than the natural condition. So we have two frequencies, 2014, 2018, and this system kept in this way for more period. And after that, the, the science was going to start to understand and they identified that this change in this movement is related with the uh, Arctic summer time that is affecting the temperature condition here in this region. Okay, so these are the, the main points about climate change. Uh, about the, the impacts, we have basically uh, observed a biodiversity reduction comparable to large mass extinction, and this is associated with the, the, the habitat loss, the fragmentation, the hunting, the exotic species that they are invasion, uh, this different variety, and climate change. So we have here example of forest uh, deforestation. We have here an uh, extreme example what climate change can uh, change. So we are bringing this main idea. And we have alternatives. Here is just a news from our university that they implant a solar system 
that gonna help to use at least the 10 to 20 percent of the energy that you are using in the universe now it's from this solar panel okay so we are using solar energy and during our project we gonna hear from you what more so what we can do what information what alternatives you can do uh, why our life is impacted the climate change okay uh, to, to finalize my, my, my class I gonna bring this uh, this site is the international intergovernmental panel on climate change EPCC uh, where there is a lot of information about climate change what gonna happen what you can do what's the last news about climate change and this is a very important because uh, this uh, panel they don't do they don't do research each uh, independent science can make your your own research and after they get together and they define if it, what did that science find uh, it's uh, confable if there is a potential result uh, looking for that and basing this all information from different sciences they can create uh, the impacts the alternatives and bring information with a, a right level of confiability for example they bring that there is 95 percent of change chance of air temperature increase in the earth because there is five percent of the science that found that maybe the earth can be in equilibrium but 95 bring other vision so we have this uncertainty behind this information so i like this this is the main uh, site about climate change in the world okay and to conclude i i, I like to bring this reflection if you compare the earth time in a, a clock here you can see that we have three hours of meteorite bombardment at 4 a.m we have an origin of life we have here afternoon a uh, single cell algae for 6 p.m we start the sexual reproduction uh, we have this the, the start of different type of life the dinosaur they arrive here almost 11 p.m. and we arrive here 11 p.m. 58 minutes and 43 seconds so we are here almost more than one minute you are gonna make a big uh, you are bring a big impact on the earth system uh, in a short time that you are present in the earth okay and now we have this our world world here with the mood stress including climate change so i have this red one it's busy biophysical stress i have the the yellow the social stress and the green represent the space that i have to adapt to this condition the resilience space and now we have a lot of decision to make we can go in a bad direction where we have too much stress uh, both physical and social and don't have space to adapt to this or we can go in another direction and arrive in a condition with a, have a, a high resilience and a low risk for our life in the planet okay so during our class we're going to talk more about climate change and you're going to bring example uh, that you can use okay thank you for your attention and don't let me know through email or in our meetings see you bye bye